This is the BG Climbers list for the week ending 9-7-2022. This list is put together every week by Michael Alexander. I'll include links in the description below if you want to take a look at the actual list. I did miss last week because everything got pretty busy uh, and the list didn't come out till late in the week, but I'm going to try to do this one pretty quickly. One thing is there's a lot of new games this week, so let's let's dive in. So the first one is uh, Osworn into Deepwood. If you aren't aware, they're going to be doing a second uh, printing Kickstarter here soon with, I think, some minor changes to the game. I mean, the game is doing extremely well. I think this is probably almost guaranteed to be in the top 100 you know, with a reprint. I think the reprint's going to do really well. And, I mean, rarely does a game end up with a 1,000 ratings and above 9. That is uh, pretty crazy. So number 10, Oathsworn into the Deepwood. Number 9, Wormhole. So I think I've heard of this game. Uh, it's I think AEG did the release. Maybe it was a Gen Con release. I, I don't know exactly. Um, it looked interesting. I like the presentation of it. I like the artwork and the, uh, I guess, the way they put it together. I think the game in general, it, I mean, I guess it's on the lighter side of medium weight games. I think it, I think it'll do well because it's AEG and usually their games are pretty decent. The initial ratings though aren't super high, uh, so I don't know if this one is likely to end up. It's probably unlikely to end up in the top 100 if you're starting out in the mid sevens for your initial ratings. But let's see. Uh, we may see it on. You know, some of these games tend to increase ratings over time. That's number nine. Wormholes. Number eight. Star Wars Villainous. Power of the Dark Side. So this is taking the villainous formula and bring it to Star Wars. I think thematically it's going to be pretty popular just from that standpoint. I mean, everyone likes Star Wars. The, the little like figurines are pretty cool. And the artwork in this game is always amazing. I think that's one of the uh, key driving factors. As far as like the villainous formula, I feel like it's been... There's a lot of villainous games. I have a bunch of Disney ones. My kids aren't quite old enough to play them yet with me. But I do think the Star Wars one will do well, but probably isn't a top 100 game. So that's number eight, Star Wars Villainous. Number seven, Don't Go In There. So we're at, uh, we're getting decent ratings on this. I don't know if I've seen this game before. So this is, it's a very lightweight game. So that's going to probably keep it out of the, out of the top 100. Meddling kids try to escape a haunted house, apparently with dice. Uh, okay, it was a Kickstarter. That's probably why I didn't know about it. Uh, dice rolling, open drafting, push your luck variables out. Interesting. And it's got, I guess, the bo maybe the box or something inside the box converts into a dice tower. Oh, the box itself is a dice tower. Like, that's kind of neat. Yeah. The artwork doesn't look bad. Actually, I kind of like the cartoony artwork. Little kids and the dice. So, yeah, the artwork artwork is good. I feel like this is a, you know, I know it was Kickstarter. <laughs> Glow in the Dark Dice, that's cool. You know, this is going to, this looks like the type of game that would be great at, like, Target. It's got, you know, great production value and is lightweight. People might, you know, pick it up for Halloween to play with, you know, play with friends. But probably not a top 100 game. So seven, don't go in there. Number six, Flamecraft. So this was a pretty big Kickstarter. If we look at it, the uh, the Kickstarter itself, you know, it did pretty decent. Uh, I guess got you know average Kickstarter rings. It has come down a little bit since then. Um, this is a game where I considered backing it because everything like the artwork, the dragons. The coins, everything looked so cool. They even had, I guess they had the um, play mat or the cloth uh, board that you could get. You know, the deluxe version, it's got all the upgrade pieces, the meat for the dragons and all that stuff. It looks really cool. I did decide to pass on it because I do have a limit on number of Kickstarters I, I back per year. Um, and, you know, the reasons why I felt like maybe as far as the mechanics, it wasn't different enough from my other games that it was worth getting uh 
uh, at the time. And also, like, you know, my favorite worker placement game is uh, A Feast for Odin. I feel like most other worker placement games just don't measure up, at least for me, to that game. As far as how, how I think this is going to do, I mean, it is a, you know, lighter, medium weight game. Yeah, almost in the lightweight game category. And I think that that will probably keep it out of the top 100. Um, on BGG, at least. So number six, Flamecraft. Number five, uh, Trudving Legends. So this was a pretty decent Kickstarter. I think this is the first week it's been on here. I did look at this, uh, Beware Your Consequence while exploring World of Myth and Legend. I did look at this as far as backing it. Again, I felt like it was kind of a, a miniatures esque game that I don't think did enough different stuff for me. Um, but. And also, uh, I think it was, if I remember right, it was published by, by Come On. And I tend to not back most of their stuff. Um, I know that their, you know, their Kickstarters are huge. And uh, they have, you know, all this content in them. But for me, I tend to, you know, if I want one of their games, I'll pick them up you know, after just the base box without all the extra stuff on it. Uh, I do kind of regret not backing the Marvel United, though, just from a tons of really cool miniature standpoint <laughs> anyway uh this probably isn't going to go in the top 100 i just don't think it's going to have the the oomph to get up there given its uh, uh early ratings in the sevens number five uh Tridvang legends number four castles academy uh, mad king ludvig collector's edition so we've seen this in the weeks before i don't think that the owner i mean castle mad king ludvig if it's not in the top 100 it was at one point. I don't know exactly where it stands right now. But I don't think the collector edition is going to make it, probably for the same reason the Suburbium one didn't make it. Um, it, uh, you know, it's like a second edition of the game that's really popular and probably won't get as much uptake in terms of copies. And, you know, it's, it is more expensive. That's number four, Castle of Mad King Ludwig collector edition. Number three, Trekking Through History. So this one, interested me because trekking through national parks i really love the artwork um and i like the national parks uh but i think the history is is kind of a more unique theme you know from my perspective uh you know talking about different events that happened in the past and you know this could also be i guess a, a learning experience if you're playing it with your kids like you know, each of these events are going to come up. Let's see if we have maybe ones. Yeah. Rock out to Live Aid. <laughs> so I guess more modern, more modern events are in there too. You know, uh, the first flight in 1903. So that's really cool. I think the production value is great. Um, I'm assuming this is going to come to uh, retail like the other one did. I may pick it up just for the educational value with my kids and to have a lighter weight game is this top 100 probably not i don't think the trekking through the national parks made it there but let's see number three trekking through history number two resist so this is a, i mean all these ones are new to the list as far as i know maybe maybe they were there last week when we missed the uh video so resist is art play deck pool building a lot of uh Cool building and deck building games in here. Solo though, lead a band of resistance fighters as they uh, try to take back their home. So, yeah, let's take a look at this. So, yeah, kind of cartoony artwork. I mean, I think it's okay. Like a in between, like almost like semi realistic, cartoony, maybe um, Valkyrie Chronicles inspired. I don't know. I'm okay on the artwork. Uh, it is a lighter weight solo game. I think the fact it's a solo game is going to keep it out of the top 100. I mean, there's maybe one or two, like, solo-only games on there. And that one is fairly heavy. So, and this was obviously a Kickstarter. 
So let's take a look at the ratings here. So it's getting decent ratings for Soul Game. I think it'll do, you know, well. Uh, probably isn't going to come to, you know, Target or something, but I would assume if it if it did decent enough on the Kickstarter, it'll probably come to retail or have a second Kickstarter. Number two, Resist. Number one, Arc Nova appears back on here. So this jumped up two, essentially two spots to number four. It looks like the average is coming in low enough where it's not going to end up at number one unless there's some, you know, push later in this year, maybe after BGGCon, up in ratings. Uh, I'll probably get a chance to play it at BGGCon. Uh, I decided not to pick it up because I felt like Terraforming Mars was better for me, and this is a very sim kind of similar game to Terraforming Mars. Although there's this new expansion, and so now it's like, well, do you want to get it? You know, maybe the expansion adds enough stuff that makes it worth getting for me. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but clearly, this is going to stick around for a while and be a very popular game. Number one, Arc Nova. So there you have it. That is the BGG Climbers for the week ending 9 7 2022. If you like this video, please like and please subscribe and please take a look at our other videos. Thank you.